This is the start of a brand new series where I'll be doing a step-by-step -step build of a Voron V0.2. I'll start with an LDO V0.1 S1 kit with their V0.2 upgrade kit. Wow, too many numbers. So let's get everything unpacked and start out with the frame. All of the documentation, STLs, materials, and tools that I use in this episode are listed in the video description. We'll start out by identifying our extrusions. There's nothing worse than having to disassemble the frame because you put the wrong extrusion in the wrong place. For this step we'll need some tape and something to mark on the tape. Because we're using the Kirigami mount, all of our extrusions are the same 200 millimeter length. Some of the extrusions have no holes on the side, but all of them are threaded for M3 on each end. Not every extrusion needs this, but it doesn't hurt that they're there. I've sorted these extrusions by how they're drilled on the side. This group of extrusions have two holes, one on each end. This single extrusion has one hole on one end and two holes, one on each end. And this final group has one hole on one end. We need to mark the extrusions so that we know where they go. The first has a quantity of one and has no holes. We'll mark this one A. Technically this one called for no holes on the ends, but again all of ours are drilled and that's okay. Next is no side holes again with a quantity of five. This one is marked as B. This one requires the end M3 holes. Now we need a quantity of two with two side holes. These are C. These again don't require the end M3 holes. This next pair of extrusions is a good example of why we were doing this step. It requires two holes on one side and one hole on the other side. When I saw this, I thought, wait a minute, I only have one of those. Of course, the answer was you have two of them. You just didn't pay enough attention and it's mixed in with the others. So these two are marked as D. So at least that frame disassembly was averted. Next, we have a quantity of four, one hole, one side. These are marked as E. And finally, we have two more, two holes, one side. These are marked as H. The skipped letters were for the stock bed that we aren't using. In the second step, we prep the linear rail parts. This step requires five M2 linear rail bars and five MGN7H linear rails. Each of these rails are 150 millimeters long. That bottom one is a genuine high one. I've never had one of those before. You'll also need something to clean the linear rails and something to grease the linear rails. This should be EP2. I'm using EP1, which is thinner. At the time of this video, EP2 is in shortage and is being scalped at about five times the normal cost. The origin of the scalped ones also make me question whether that's real. You'll also need something to get the grease into the linear rail. You may also need zip ties to keep the carriage from coming off the end of the rail. When working with linear rails, you need to make sure that the carriage can't come off the end. If the carriage comes off the rail, you're probably not going to be happy. 
The high wind rail doesn't have any temporary end stops. Just use some zip ties for this. The stainless rails that were included in my kit were very clean. The high wind had packing grease on it. Just make sure your rails are clean before we start mounting them. You also need to lube the carriage. All of the grease ports on my carriages in this kit are open. This isn't always the case with all brands of linear rails. If yours isn't, my best recommendation is to carefully inject grease from the back side in the little gap where the bearings meet the rail. If you do have open ports, just add grease to both ports and move the slide back and forth and repeat the process until you feel like it's well greased. With the LDO kit, we get M2 linear rail bars, so I don't need to worry about the individual M2 nuts and printed carriers. So that's it for this step, so let's move on to the next step and finally build something. In the third step, we mount the Y linear rails. This step requires two of the E extrusions, two of the linear rails. If you have a kit with a high one rail, save it for the X. Two of the linear rail bars, 10 M2 by six millimeter socket or button head screws, and two of the printed rail installation guides. You'll also need something to measure the distance from the end of the extrusions and a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. You'll also need some tape. We start out with our extrusion, making sure that the side with the hole is the side we're working on. The linear rail bars that we'll be adding have a flat side and a curved side. We want the flat side to be facing out towards the linear rails. Just slide the rail bar into the extrusion from the end. Again, make sure that hole is on the uh, same side. Do the same thing for the other extrusion. Now we need to carefully remove the end stops from the linear rail. Remember this thing can slide off the end and you'll have bearings everywhere. Align the linear rail holes with the bar holes. And starting in the middle, add a M2 screw. Just snug it, we need to move things around yet. In the center, there's another threaded hole right beside that one. I realized later the manual didn't show you putting a screw in there. Unless you have extra screws, don't put one here. Move the rail carriage over these two screws and tape it down. Working your way out from the middle, add the rest of the screws. Again, don't tighten them down very much because we need to move it around in the next steps. Make sure the rail bar isn't off center. You can confirm this by seeing that there's threaded holes on each end. Repeat these processes on the other extrusion. Next, we need to make sure that the linear rail is centered on the extrusion. We do this by placing a printed rail installation guide on each end. Then we need to make sure that the linear rail is 38 millimeters from the end with the hole in it. You can do this with a rigid ruler, but I prefer to use my digital calipers. Again, make sure you do this on the end with a hole. Now the screws can be tightened down for good. Make sure to tighten them from the center out again. Use a quality hex wrench on such small screws. These heads, and in particular the button head screws, drip out very easily. Do the same thing on the other extrusion. And now we're ready for the next step. In the fourth step, we add the Y rail stops. 
For this step we'll need the Y assemblies from the previous step, two M3 by 8 millimeter button head screws, two M3 hex nuts, and two printed rail stops. You'll also need a two millimeter hex wrench. Let's start out with a discussion on M3 nuts. LDO supplies both regular hex nuts and also flat slide-in nuts. To begin with, I was a little confused. I wasn't real sure where the flat nuts should be used. After asking around, it was pointed out that it was right in front of me in some LDO documentation. They're provided so that if you forget to add a nut or you're adding an accessory later, you can slide these into place with a printed piece and not have to disassemble the frame. So I'll be using the regular hex nuts where they're called for. We also can use printed no-drop nuts. These are used to keep the nut in place in the extrusion until you can get the screw threaded into it. We will be using these. They're just not required on this step. This step starts with one of the rail stops. This is the bottom. And this is the top. Add one of the M3 screws to the hole in the top. Add a hex nut to the bottom of the screw. These parts are small and fiddly and hard to film. Only thread the nut on far enough that it doesn't fall off. We have to fit it on the extrusion next. This stop is going on the end without the hole. Make sure the stop's square end goes against the rail. And that the stop is all the way up against the rail. Then just tighten it down. Do the same thing for the other side. These stops will keep the carriage from coming off the end of the rail, but remember the other side has no stop, so keep the tape on the carriages. In the fifth step, we mount the Z linear rails. This step requires two of the C extrusions, two of the linear rails. If you have a kit with a Highland rail, just like last time, save it for the X, two of the linear rail bars, 10 M2 by six millimeter socket or button head screws, two M3 by eight millimeter button head screws, two M3 hex nuts, two printed rail stops, and two of the printed rail installation guides. You'll also need something to measure the distance from the end of the extrusions, and a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. You'll also need a two millimeter hex wrench, and some tape. Just like the last assembly, we need to make sure we're using the correct side of the extrusion. Again, we're using the side with the holes. Add the linear rail bar to the extrusion flat side up. Do the same for the other extrusion. Remove the stops from the end of the linear rails. Starting in the center, add the M2 screws. And as always, the carriages should be taped down. Just like the last assembly, we're just snugging these up because we're going to need to move it around in the next steps. And repeat the process on the other extrusion. Center the rail by adding the rail installation guides. We need to give one end of the rail a 33 millimeter offset this time. And then tighten everything down from the center out. Next is the carriage stop. It's done the exact same way as our last assembly was. It goes on the top, which is the side that we offset 33 millimeters. 
now repeat the same process on the other extrusion. Just like last time, you should leave the carriages tape. In the sixth step, we build the Z-axis top and bottom extrusions. For this step, we need two of the B extrusions, four M3 by 10 millimeter button head screws, four M3 by six millimeter button head screws, six M3 hex nuts, and six of the no drop nut mods. You'll also need a two millimeter hex wrench. Start out by adding the 10 millimeter long M3 screws to the ends of the extrusions. They need to be screwed in just far enough to fit into another extrusion's groove. Do this on both ends of both extrusions. Add the M3 nuts to the printed no drop nut mods. At this point, either extrusion can be the top or the bottom and any side can be used. We'll start with the bottom, so we need to add four of the M3 nuts. Make sure the nut is facing out. They're a little difficult to get in, but this is far better than them falling out all the time. Their exact location on the extrusion doesn't matter yet. For the top extrusion, we add the other two nuts. And again, their location doesn't matter yet. Now we add the 6mm M3 screws to some of the nuts. On the bottom rail, it's the two outer nuts. Just like our end screws, they need to be just far enough in to fit into another extrusion's grooves. On the top extrusion, we add screws to both of the nuts. In step 7, we start assembling the Z-axis frame. This step requires the top B extrusion, the bottom B extrusion, the two C extrusions that were built as Z rails, three M3 hex nuts, and three of the no drop nut mods. You'll also need a two millimeter hex wrench. For this step, we start out by attaching the Z rail assemblies to the bottom assembly. Just a reminder, the bottom one's the one with the extra two M3 nuts between the two screws. Set the bottom extrusion assembly with the screws facing up. The Z rail assembly should have the rails facing up and the side of the rail that has no stop facing the bottom. Slide the Z rail extrusion over the screw on the bottom. The holes in the extrusions allow you to get to the underlying screw. Just barely tighten down the Z rail assembly. We'll have to move it around in future steps. Now combine your M3 nuts with the no drop nut mods. Set the assembly upright so you can get to the back of the right extrusion. This is where your carriages fall off if you didn't have them taped. And add the three M3 nuts to the extrusion. Repeat after me, it's better than the nuts falling out all the time. It's better than the nuts falling out all the time. They're a little painful to use. <laughs> And finally, for this step, we need to attach the top extrusion. 
Well, it's starting to look like part of a frame. In step eight, we add the end rails and some end stops. We also square everything up for the back of the frame. This step needs the Z-axis assembly we just built, two H extrusions, two printed rail stops, and two M3 by eight millimeter button head screws. Also add two M3 nuts because I forgot them and I'm too lazy to redo the shots. You'll also need a two millimeter hex wrench, a flat surface to build on. It doesn't have to be a surface plate like this, but it's a cheap one and I have it, so that's what I'm using. You'll also need something to measure with and a machinist square. This is a three inch 75 millimeter one. My normal 150 millimeter is just too big for this little printer. We start this step with the H rails. Pay attention to where the holes are. Slide the extrusion onto the screws on the end and make sure that the holes are positioned so you can get to those screws. Do the same thing on the other side. Now, while holding the extrusions down flat against the flat surface and making sure that the end extrusion doesn't extend past the top or bottom, tighten down each corner. Besides being flush, we also need to make sure that the inside corners are square. Now the Z rail extrusions need to be 58 millimeters in from the inside edge of the end extrusion. Make sure the extrusion is even with the top and bottom and snug each one up as the measurement is correct. Repeat the process for the other rail. Now fully tighten them down. and double check that nothing moved. Last part of this step, symbol the rail stop with the M3 screw and M3 nut, just like in the previous steps. And add them to the end of the rail that doesn't have any stops. Make sure your flat sides are against the rail. Well, that's it for this video. I'm trying not to do 40 minute videos like I did on my previous series. I'm sure we'll be able to finish the frame in the next video. As always, uh, tell me how I did on this video. I truly do want to get better at this.